What's up, my friend? Abby here, and welcome back to another episode of Writer's Life Wednesdays, where we come together to help you make your story matter and make your author dreams come true. Flashbacks are one of those aspects of writing that can be tricky to master. A well-timed, well-written flashback can deepen our understanding of the characters and help us to care so much more about the story. But flashbacks are also easy to mess up. Backstory is the foundation of your characters, right? It's what has happened in the past that shaped the person they are today. However, if you go about revealing this backstory the wrong way, you're in danger of boring your reader and losing their interest. That's why in this video, I'm going to be sharing the do's and don'ts of writing flashbacks, common mistakes that I see many writers make and how to avoid these pitfalls so that you can make every single flashback in your story compelling and emotional and meaningful. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. Okay, first things first, we're going to explore the don'ts and then we're gonna look at the do's. So first, number one, don't go into a flashback without a clear trigger. A flashback means hitting pause on the current story to go into the past and show us something that's going to matter to us. The thing about the human brain is that our subconscious mind is constantly searching for relevancy and meaning in what we're looking at. So if your reader can't immediately see the reason why we're going into this flashback at this specific moment, they're going to be disoriented. I see so many writers make this mistake. They'll be like, oh, don't worry. It's going to all make sense later. No, 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 no. It has to make sense now. <laughs> it can take on deeper meaning and greater significance later, but it has to make sense to my brain right now. I have to understand why I'm looking at what I'm looking at. I have to see the relevancy, even if I don't see the significance until later. Number two, don't give the reader a flashback that has no impact on the present story. You know what's even worse than going into a flashback that has no obvious trigger or reason for being there? Coming out of a flashback that has absolutely no impact on the story and does not change the way we see things in the present day at all. We're just left reeling and disoriented, kind of like waking up from a dream that made zero sense and you're like, what was that? Did that mean anything to me? I, I, I don't think so. Like I said before, relevancy is so vital when it comes to flashbacks. We want to keep the dopamine firing in your reader's brain. Keep them curious, keep them asking questions, and then keep answering those questions. So we are triggering that curiosity reward system in your reader's brain and answering the questions that they're silently asking themselves. Maybe those questions are something like, what happened in the past to make this character believe their lie? What tragedies or struggles have they faced to make them so, insert negative character trait here? What secrets of their past are they keeping hidden in the present day? Number three, don't use a flashback to info dump your world building. If you are going to use a flashback to tell us, Long ago in this world, there were this group of people who fought with that group of people, and this magic did this, and that magic did that, and then this government was established, and then this army fought with that army, and nobody cares. If this information is not directly impacting the protagonist, then we don't know why it matters to us. See, the protagonist is the character we care the most about. So we end up measuring the importance of everything by the protagonist, as in how important is it to the protagonist because that's how important it is to me. That's why I always, always encourage writers to use exposition through action, as in we learn about the world as the protagonist moves through and interacts with the world what is happening to them right now, we can see why it matters to them and we can see why it matters to us by extension. So please save your world building for the present moment and try to avoid 
really lengthy monologues about the history of things. As we get deeper into the story, it might become vital for the protagonist to learn more about the history of their world, but let us see that through their eyes. That way we are immersed in their perspective and we're making these discoveries along with them and not just being force fed a bunch of information that we're just gonna skim through and probably forget. Number four, don't use a flashback to answer questions we haven't asked. Answering questions before your reader asks them is a surefire way to kill suspense. You want to keep your reader curious, engaging with the story, and finding those puzzle pieces and putting them together, solving the mystery of the plot. You want them to ask questions. Now, this is not to say that you shouldn't lead with backstory to set up where your character's internal conflict came from. You know me, I'm a huge advocate for opening with backstory, opening with a flashback to your character's past where maybe their misbelief took root or their fatal flaw took root and they started to believe this lie that then springboards into all their internal conflict in the present day. Opening with a backstory scene like this can be a really powerful way to hook readers and pull them into your story. So it's a balance. It's a balance between showing us enough to make us care about this character and empathize with them and still giving us room to ask questions. So if you're struggling to find this balance, here's my rule of thumb. Give me enough to care about the characters but leave out enough to keep me curious about them. Okay, now before we dive into the do's of writing flashbacks, I want to quickly interrupt myself here to tell you guys that I'm going to be hosting a special live training this weekend, diving even deeper into the topic of flashbacks and backstory. So in this video right now, I'm giving you some quick tips, ways that you can avoid some common mistakes that writers make with flashbacks and make your flashbacks more engaging and powerful and memorable. But in this live training, we're going to take it one step further. We're gonna go even deeper into this and look look at actual styles of flashbacks and how to make them work for your story step by step with examples. So in this training, we're going to cover it all. I'm going to show you how to write parallel flashbacks, mirroring something in the past with something happening in the present bite-sized flashbacks and how to weave them seamlessly into your narrative dual timeline flashbacks for when you want to include lots of backstory in your book without distracting from the present story, flashbacks from mysterious narrators, and how to do this without confusing your reader. We're also going to explore how to leverage the curiosity reward magic ratio to keep your reader addicted to learning about your character's past. And I'm going to give you guys tons of story examples to help you visualize what these methods look like in writing. So we're gonna look at movie examples, book examples. I'm also going to share a little bit of my own writing to show you some examples of how these different flashbacks can weave seamlessly into your story and make your story and your characters that much more layered and vivid and relatable. So if you want to take your flashbacks to the next level, I invite you to join this live training. It's going to be amazing. It's happening Sunday, September 3rd at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Click the link below this video to save your spot. And if you can't make it to the live stream, don't worry, you will still have access to watch the replay as many times as you want. And remember, when you join my Patreon at the live training pass level to get access to watch this event, you also get access to all my previous live trainings. So that's an entire archive of live trainings, diving deep into topics on writing and publishing. I think you'll love it. I think you'll find a lot of value in that vault archive of live trainings. And I think you're going to love the live training I'm doing this weekend on flashbacks. So space is limited. Save your spot. Links below this video. Okay, let's get back into our do's and don'ts of writing powerful flashbacks. Let's look at the things you should do when writing flashbacks. Number one, do give every flashback a clear trigger. Like I said at the beginning of this video, our brain is constantly searching for relevancy. Why does this matter? Why am I looking at this right now? What trigger has led me here? And remember, the trigger doesn't have to be something huge. It doesn't have to be a big explosive event. It could be something very small that triggers your character your point of view character to have a memory about something that happened in their past. 
Sometimes what I do is I write all my characters' backstory in a separate document and I save it on the side and then I just go ahead and write the story, the present day story, and then I go through and look for areas where I can naturally weave in these triggers and weave in these flashbacks in a way that feels seamless. So that's another thing you can do is write all the backstory ahead of time separately and then later search for places where you can add these triggers and add these flashbacks. Do make every flashback change the way we see the story going forward. When we step out of the flashback, we should find ourselves looking at the present day story and the characters in a new light, even if it's just a slight shift. What makes a flashback powerful is how it affects the way we see the current day story. It's not important so much because it happened once, but because it's happening still. The effects of this moment in your character's past are like ripples on a lake. They're continuing to have an effect on your character's life and an effect on how we see the story long after the thing actually happened. So when you come out of the flashback, ask yourself, does this change the way my reader sees the protagonist? Does it shed light on something we've been curious about this whole time? Does it help us see where the character's present internal conflicts came from? Do use flashbacks to answer questions and reward our curiosity. In my studies as a story scientist, I've found that there seems to be like this magic ratio of curiosity and reward when it comes to answering your readers' questions. And this is especially true of stories that have like some sort of mystery element to them or an unreliable narrator, protagonist that maybe is morally gray and maybe their motivations aren't entirely clear. I've found that the curiosity to reward ratio that seems to work the best is two to one. So basically we have twice as many questions as we have answers, but we're still getting answers to our questions. We are still being continuously rewarded with little bits and pieces of information that is making that dopamine fire in our brain. See, if you never reward your reader with the answers and you're just building up and up and up to this big reveal at the end, your reader might not even make it to the end because they might give up. They might become so frustrated because they're not getting any reward, they're not getting any satisfaction, they're not getting any answers that you lose them. So flashbacks can be a wonderful way to sprinkle in those answers piece by piece and sort of leave this cookie trail of rewards for our curiosity. Okay, it's not fully satisfying, we wanna to get to the next one. We want to always find another answer because we have twice as many questions as we have answers, but we're still getting that reward of the answers. We're slowly finding all these little pieces of the puzzle and as we put them together, that's where the real satisfaction comes from. That's where that dopamine hit comes from is that we're starting to see the bigger picture as we put together the pieces of the puzzle. So remember, make your reader care about the character by revealing enough of their internal conflict, but keep them asking questions, keep them curious, leave enough of a mystery that your reader wants to turn the next page, they want to stay up just a few more minutes reading because they need to know the answer. Okay, boom, there you have it. The do's and don'ts of writing flashbacks. If you want to take your flashbacks to the next level and bring your character's backstory to life in a powerful and meaningful way, then you don't wanna miss my live training happening this Sunday. We're going to dive deep into writing flashbacks and all the different methods and styles that you can use and what this looks like in action, in real stories, so that you can then go forth and write some amazing, powerful flashbacks for your book. That live training is happening on September 3rd at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope to see you over there. And remember, when you unlock this training, you also unlock the entire archive of my previous live trainings and I hope to see you there because you're going to love it. So click the link below this video to save your spot and I can't wait to dive even deeper into the topic of flashbacks with you. Comment below this video and tell me what are some of your favorite examples of flashbacks in books. One of my favorite examples is my new book, The Other World, which is coming out September 19th. I'm so excited to share this book with you guys. There are lots of flashbacks in this book, not as many as 100 Days of Sunlight, which is my previous book, 
but there are some really lovely flashbacks in this story and I so enjoyed writing it and I cannot wait to share it with you guys. You can actually pre-order this book right now by clicking the links below this video as well if you want to check it out. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos every Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on. Shh.